All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig in a Pickle Krug Show with a little San Francisco Giant video. Where is Joey Bart headed? Because he's probably going to be traded in the next three weeks. We'll talk about some of the possibilities coming up next. But first, we're brought to you by Pig in a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pick and a pickle, the best barbecue you're going to find. We're also brought to you by Marin Autoglass, marinautoglass.com, and Sharp Corner Sports Cards and Collectibles. Check them out in Pacific Grove. Call Anthony Catania at 831-521-5264. All right, let's talk a little Joey Bart. I've always been a big Joey Bart fan. Um, the Giants took him second overall in the draft, one of the last picks of the Brian Sabian era. And uh, it just hasn't worked out. I mean, the guy's got tremendous bat speed. He's, he's a great catch-and-throw catcher. Um, he's improved his, his receiving, his framing, his throwing dramatically to the point where I would say he's a well above average major league catcher defensively. As far as catch-and-throw, he's got a rocket for an arm. The guy still has huge bat speed. And if he ever figures it out offensively, I don't think he's ever going to be a high average hitter, but I think he could be a guy who hits you 20 bombs in the big leagues. It would not surprise me. So he is out of options, and the Giants are going with uh, Bailey behind the plate. They acquired Murphy as a veteran backup. Um, you know, they have depth behind that. Um, so it's really, it's really Joey Bart uh, either has to make the club or he has to go through waivers. So... Today is March the 5th as we're sitting here. Opening day is March the 28th. So I'll, I'll put it out there. Joey Bart will be traded from the Giants to another club some point in the next 23 days. So basically we're, we're closing in on the final three weeks of Joey Bart's career with the Giants. Um, and as I said, I think Bart has value. He's got a right-handed power bat. Uh, he can catch and throw, but he's out of options. And so I think he's likely to be dealt here in the next three weeks. Now, what are the Giants going to try to get in return? Some people are like, oh, he has no value. He's not worth anything. That's not true. He plays a premium position. He's got bat speed, strength. It hasn't worked out in San Francisco. He's going to get multiple more chances before he's literally done. Um, and you say, well, what's he worth? You know, he's out of options. And there's a bunch of players around the big leagues who are also out of options on their respective teams. And um, I think there's a very good opportunity out there for the Giants to trade the out-of-option Joey Bart to another team for the out-of-option player that fits a position that the Giants have a need. So let's talk about that for a second. Where do the Giants have needs? Well, shortstop, right out of the chute. Uh, they signed Nick Ahmed, which was a good good signing, and Ahmed's going to play a ton for the Giants this year. I thought that was a really under-the-radar signing. Um, but Marco Luciano has not hit a lick this spring. So the idea was, I think, initially to go with Luciano and go with Nick Ahmed as the backup. But now Luciano is, looks like he's in such an offensive funk that they may want to start with Luciano in the minor leagues. And then you're asking Nick Ahmed to play shortstop every day. So if you could find somebody who can play a little shortstop, who could play other positions, I think that would be something Farhan's looking for. Um, there's no question that the Giants need more depth of starting pitching. You know, with what's happened to Keaton Wynn and Sean Jelly um, and, and um, Tristan Beck recently, they... That's their depth in the rotation. Robbie Ray's coming back, but not till later this summer. Alex Cobb's coming back, but not till later this summer. The Giants have to get through the first half of the year, so they could use um, some starting pitching depth. There's no question about that. And um, offensively, I think you know they could use a little jolt in the outfield. I mean, if they if they could get the right kind of young, controllable outfielder that hits a little bit. Um, and adds to their outfield offense, I think they would got to be open to that as well, even though they do have a lot of numbers in that outfield. Um, how many of those guys are good? 
I mean, you got Jung Hoo Lee, Slater, eh. Uh, you got, you know, Yaz. You know, I mean, <laughs> Elliot Ramos, uh, Luis Matos. Um, you know, that, some camp surprises possibly, but I mean, to me, those are the three spots the Giants are really looking for help. Shortstop because Luciano's not hitting. Starting pitching depth because so many injuries already have depleted their depth. And just any outfielder, any young outfielder that for whatever reason gets caught up in a numbers game and potentially is out there. All right, so who are the matches? What matches are out there? Well, MLB Trade Rumors put out a list of every team's players that are out of options. And I went through and looked at all the teams in the league and looked at what they had behind the plate and looked at what they have on the mound and, 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 and who's out of options and so on and so forth. And here are the seven teams that I think make the most sense on a Joey Bart trade. And some of these would have to include other players to sweeten it for the other team. Um, you're probably not just going to get this player straight up for Joey Bart, but I could see Joey Bart being involved in a trade. Let's go number one, player that I've really liked for a long time, Mickey Moniak with the Angels. The, he's out of options. The Angels catchers are Logan Ohop and Matt Thice. Um, they, don't have, they don't have a lot of options behind the plate. Uh, Thice hit 214 last year. Ohop's got a little power. He hit 236. I could see the Angels having some interest in Joey Bart. Now they're not going to do it. They're not going to go Mickey Moniak straight up for Joey Bart. But if you traded Elliot Ramos and Mickey and uh, and Joey Bart, maybe you could get a Mickey Moniak. Moniak's a, I think a you know another guy kind of like Bart. Really high pick in the draft. It's taken him a while to figure it out. Coming off a year last year where he actually swung the bat well, 280, 14 home runs, 45 RBIs. Um, they're not in a rush to move Mickey Moniak, but if you sweeten the deal and use Bart as one of the pieces in there, uh, that's a player that I think would make the Giants a whole lot better. Moniak can play center field. Um, he can play on the corners. He can hit a little bit. He's coming into his own. He's getting more body strength. He's, he's starting to develop. Um, that would be a player I would have a lot of interest in if the Angels were willing to move on from Mickey Moniak, who I said is out of options. Now let's go to option two. Cleveland has an outfielder, Estevan Florial, who once upon a time was a hot shot prospect in the Yankees system. I've loved Florial. Now Florial hasn't come of age. He hit 230 last year in 61 at bats. He's very, very fast, lots of bat speed, has a lot of potential in the outfield, but he hasn't really fulfilled that yet. They have Bo Naylor and Austin Hedges behind the plate. So they don't really necessarily have a need for Joey Bart, but Florial would be the kind of outfield piece that I think I'd be interested in if I could get Cleveland interested in a package that included Joey Bart. That was number two. Number three, now this guy's definitely worth more than Joey Bart. Um, and that's Edward Cabrera, the Marlins starting pitcher. He's out of options. He went seven and seven last year with a 424 ERA. Um, they have Nick Fortes and Christian Betancourt behind the plate. So they could have a need for Joey Bart. Uh, you'd have to trade more than Joey Bart to get Cabrera. But man, that's the kind of arm that could change the giant uh, rotation. If you could somehow find a way to get them to part with Edward Cabrera uh, in a deal that included Bart and others, um, man, you could get a nice starting pitcher who's cost controllable. He's also out of options, but he's a young guy with great stuff. Edward Cabrera would be a nice fit. Some people would say, you know what? That's way, way overthinking the value of Joey Bart. So I understand that. It would take Bart and then some to get Cabrera. Uh, another name that's interesting to me is Jorge Mateo, who Obviously, Bob Melvin knows from his A's days. Obviously, Farhan knows from his A's days. Once upon a time, Jorge Mateo was the hottest prospect in the game coming up through the Yankees system. He's now with Baltimore. He can play shortstop. He can play the outfield. He's more of a utility guy. 
217 last year with seven home runs in, tw in 2023. He gives you a ton of speed. I mean, this is an impact runner. I mean, this guy's really, really fast. And you could play him the first five innings of the game um, and and go with Nick Ahmed in the late innings for defense. You could start Ahmed and use Mateo as a pinch hitter, pinch runner. Um, he's got incredible speed. He's a right-handed hitter. Um, you know, he's not a star. He, I think nobody expects him to be a star, but he would give you a dynamic runner off your bench and a guy that um, the manager is familiar with um, and has a lot of talent. And, and, and is kind of in that Joey Bart kind of category of once upon a time, everybody thought he was incredible. And now he's not thought of in the same vein, but he still has some contributing elements uh, to his game. I'm a big fan of Jorge Mateo, number four on the list. All right, let's get down to five, six, and seven. Number five is Christian Pache, who's also a former A, who Bob Melvin knows well. He was he finished up in Philly this year or last year, 238 and 84 at bats um, in uh, 2023. Um, you know, Pache is an awesome defensive center fielder who can't hit. I mean, that's really it. He has not hit, hasn't hit at all, um, really anywhere. Came up with the Braves as a as a top prospect, didn't hit there. Went to the A's, didn't hit there. They moved him to Philly. He didn't hit there. But, man, the defense in center field is spectacular. He can run. If you feel like you've got the right hitting coaches that can unlock something in him, uh, Pache is the kind of defensive player in center field that, you know, you would love to have. Um, I don't know if it's a fit, but he's probably caught up in a numbers game. He's out of options. All these guys, by the way, are out of options. Moniac, Florial, Cabrera, Jorge Mateo, Christian Pache, they're all out of options. So they kind of fit uh, in a trade straight up for Joey Bart, who's also out of options. Another angle on this, number six on the list, Jose Barrero for the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds have a tremendous infield uh, with all kinds of options. Barrero's blocked. He hit 218 last year. He can play center field or shortstop. He's got a right-handed power bat. Um, in a lot of ways, Barrero is at shortstop what Bart is behind the plate. Super talented, lots of bat speed. There's three or four teams that are going to take a chance on him over the next three or four years because he does have pop in that bat, uh, thunder in the wrists, and can play multiple spots and is not old. Uh, Jose Barrero, if you could get the Reds interested in Joey Bart, um, maybe you could make a deal for Jose Barrero. All right, and let's get down to the last one. And this is the one that I think probably has the most possibility of happening. And that's with the White Sox, who showed interest in catching in the offseason. Uh, Bart, I think, would help them quite a bit. Um, no doubt in my mind that the White Sox would love to have Joey Bart. They have two young arms that once upon a time were thought of as top of the rotation arms, and they're now out of options and would slot in nicely at the back end of the giant rotation. One is the right-hander Tuki Toussaint, um, who came up with the Braves. He's got, you know, mid-90s fastball and a big overhand hammer curveball. He went four and seven with a four nine seven ERA last year. Um, Toussaint's bounced around. He really has. He's been on a number of teams, but people keep giving him shots because he's got a tremendous arsenal of 93, 94, heavy, boring action, and a big 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock break on the curveball. Um, and he's got a durable arm. You know, I think he could be a guy that could actually throw 200 innings. And the other guy the White Sox have is Davey Garcia who is a five foot eight, five foot nine right-handed power pitcher that the Yankees had as their top young pitcher for years. He's coming off a year last year. He went 0-1 with a 2.40 ERA in the big leagues. Davey Garcia has a big arsenal. He's a little-bodied guy. I mean, think of like a Pedro Martinez. He's a little-bodied guy, but he's got big, big stuff. 
And if you could somehow trade Joey Bart and wind up with those two guys or one of those two guys to help the back end of your rotation, I think Toussaint, Toussaint or Garcia could be um, you know, 10, 12 game winners in the National League and guys that could really be useful for the Giants and Bob Melvin in their rotation this year. Why would the Giants have interest? Well, the story of the day is Sean Jelly has an elbow sprain. He's going to be out. Tristan Beck has had a right shoulder uh, situation going. They're saying he's going to be out at least six weeks. And Keaton Wynn's been bothered by an elbow injury. So the Giants' depth behind Harrison and Hicks and obviously Logan Webb is pretty thin. I mean, they could go with Mason Black. They could go with Carson Wisenhut. They could go with their own internal young arms. But here are two young, talented arms that are out of options with the White Sox. And maybe you could turn Joey Bart into, you know, a couple of starting pitchers uh, coming your way. Uh, Depth-wise, I love Toussaint and I love Garcia. And I'd love to see those guys get a shot at the back of the giant rotation. So there you go. Joey Bart probably in his final three weeks in a Giants uniform. Um, and I'm saying, man, he's out of options. Who else is out of options? Mickey Moniak, Estevan Florial, Edward Cabrera, Jorge Mateo, Christian Pache, Jose Barrero, Tuki Toussaint, Davey Garcia. Those guys are all out of options too. And I'll be honest, I'd move Bart for any of those guys and be really happy um, to have gotten something for him in the 11th hour. All right, thanks to Pig and a Pickle and all of our sponsors for sponsoring our video. Thanks to all you for uh, supporting the Krug Show on YouTube. And uh, check out more. We've got more giant stuff coming in the uh, days, weeks, and months ahead. Uh, but look for Joey Barr to be traded in the next three weeks. And if you're looking for what's a fair outcome or a fair return, I think the guys I just named there fit the bill. Thanks for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.